So uh, I want to try something different with some new uh, stormtroopers. So like, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a big Star Wars fan, right? Like that's part of the reason why I wanted to try Star Wars Legion. I've been wanting to to get into it, wanting to play it, and um, but I wanted to try something different that I haven't tried before, which is these little um, uh, acrylic bases, you know, so that like the bottom is see-through and um like the reason why i want to do that is because i want to live out my favorite star wars battles right like whether they're on hoth or tatooine or just wherever i want my stormtroopers to just fit in and not have like mud or snow or just like sand or, or you name it like around their little feet right so there's some extra kind of steps that I had to go through to to get these guys painted how I wanted to. I mean, the, the actual paint job, like the Stormtrooper paint job, is super simple and pretty quick and easy. And it went really fast to bang out, you know, like all of the, the guys from the core box. But um, putting them on the acrylic bases, is, there's a little bit of extra work that goes into that. But uh, yeah, I'll show you how I how I did these guys, and uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty quick and easy. Otherwise, um, besides just getting them onto the acrylic. So first up, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup with one of these little sanding sticks, and um, the fantasy flight stuff is a little bit different. It's the um, the plastic is a little bit different. It's I think it is. It's either an ABS or a styrene plastic, so I can still use plastic cement on it to get that really strong weld in there, but um, it's a little bit more rubbery. It has a little bit more give to it than a, a really hard plastic like uh, GW or something like that. But these guys look really, really good, you know, like pretty minimal cleanup uh, out of the box. The next part that's going to be a little bit different from what I usually do is that um, I'm going to try something with this. Um, so I, I wanted to try priming everybody glued to a, um, a paint stir stick and I'm just using some double sided tape, some like double sided duct tape stuff. And I was originally planning, I was, I was thinking like, oh, I could just airbrush all of these guys on here and get them kind of up to the level where I'm ready to start doing brush painting with the, um, just having them on the, the paint stick glued on there. But I ended up just priming them on there instead. So... Yeah, I'm using uh, Steinle Res. Um, the the Steinle Res has become, uh, Steinle Res Black has become my favorite primer. And um, it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a really, really good primer. I used to be a Vallejo primer guy, but Steinle Res is my favorite now. And I'm just gonna hit everybody all over with the airbrush. And I actually prefer to prime with the airbrush like this because it's a lot easier to get into every little nook and cranny with the airbrush than it is to do it with a rattle can. And um, if the, everybody's stuck, you know, their little feet stuck really well to just the double-sided tape. So that was nice. So instead of sticking everybody down to a paint stick and doing all the airbrushing that way, I ended up using a plonk um, and uh, doing all the airbrushing on there. And, you know, to be honest, I think it's, I'm not really sure it makes it any easier or saves you any time to do all of it on the paint stick anyways, um, because it's it makes it more difficult to like get in there and, and do it how you want to. 
But uh, anyway, so I'm just gonna do a Xenothal Prime, kind of like a normal Xenothal Prime, how I how I uh, would do if I was doing any other kind of paint job. So um, I'm gonna cover up the black at 45 degrees with um, a, uh, a neutral gray. And um, because these guys are gonna be mostly white, you know, Stormtrooper armor anyways, um, there's not really gonna be a lot of like black shadows on them, but there is gonna be a little bit. Like you can see later on, you know, there's, there's a little teeny tiny bit of, of black shadows left on these models after I'm done. But um, I'm mostly just gonna use the airbrush to do the white all over and get the, uh, the shadows in where I want them and lights and darks and all that. And then I'm just gonna keep that and, uh, and then glaze other colors on top of it. So the other difference too is, is gonna be that as I come in with the white, um, uh, normally I would be a little more sparing with the white. Um, usually when you're doing a Xenothal Prime with white, you just wanna sort of hit the models from the very tops and just kind of give them a white little shot of the white on top because it's pretty glaringly bright and um, it, you know, it screws up your, uh, your highlights if you use too much white. But since these guys have white armor, you know, that's gonna be like, I, I shot maybe a little tiny bit of it, like from the front, you know, on the sides, like not just top down, like 45 degrees or whatever. Just a little bit, just to get that white armor to pop. Okay, so same thing, um, once I got everybody where I wanted them with the airbrush, um, I glued them down using plastic cement, and um, that's gonna work on styrene, and it's gonna work on acrylic, and uh, it's gonna work on ABS, and um, it creates just a, a super strong bond where it um, actually melts the, the two pieces of plastic together. So next up, I'm gonna come in with the wet palette. And um, I uh, recently stocked up on um, Army Painter Speed Paints. And um, I actually, you know, they're, they're very similar to the contrast paints. I did a review. Um, but um, for me, like the main difference is that I can use them on the wet palette. And I'm a wet palette guy. Like I really, really prefer um, using the wet palette and just having it set up um, and just laying flat where I can use it and set up a paint palette, have paints on there, and then not have to worry about knocking paint pots over, um, not having to worry about, um, you know, like having the different colors uh, set up and ready to go. So I, I just I just prefer to have a little palette set up like this, but you know it's I think it's a more of a matter of preference kind of thing. But uh, first off, I'm gonna come in with this uh, Army Painter Speed Paint Grim Black, and um, I'm gonna just do all of the um, uh, little joints and stuff, and it, like mostly these guys are black and white you know, uh, because they're stormtroopers. <laughs> it makes them easy to paint. Um, th this part is a little bit tedious because, you know, if you screw up with the black on the white, then it's like, um, it's a little bit tough to like erase, you know, or like smudge the, um, the black onto the white. Um, normally with the speed paints, if you do make a little mistake, you can take a clean brush or a brush with like a little bit of water on it. And then you can kind of like smudge your mistake and use the, the clean brush like an eraser. But I mean, I guess the, the best way is just to um, be really careful with how you're painting <laughs> so that you have less cleanup later. So 
So I'm also gonna come in and get all of the uh, weapons with this black too. And, um, you know, normally like with uh, weapons and stuff like that, like I do want to use some kind of an under undercoat of a darker color and then come in and do some metallic highlights and stuff like that. But like stormtroopers in the movies, the like the weapons are just, they're just black. Um, like maybe you might have a little teeny tiny bit of like edge highlighting or something like wear and tear where somebody's kind of scuffed up their gun. But you know, in the movies, like they're, they're everything is just like jet black. So I actually think that this looks pretty good. Like it looks pretty appropriate. So I did kind of struggle a little bit with like the little helmets, the visors and stuff, um, and like the little vents like and all that in the face mask and stuff. I did find a solution for that later. Um, and so I'm just gonna come in for now and kind of put in some of this black stuff and I'm gonna clean it up. But then I, I managed to get the effect that I was going for using a wash later. So to clean up all of my boo-boos, um, I'm just going to come in with some Vallejo white and uh, just touch everything up anywhere where I made mistakes, um, like uh, especially on like the face masks and stuff, because that's the thing that really stands out is uh, faces and just kind of come in and, and um, cover up any spots where like the black kind of spilled over somewhere where I don't want it. Um, like, yeah, you get the idea. The only other color that I'm actually gonna put on the uh, wet palette though, is this uh, Army Painter Speed Paint Zealot Yellow. And um, you know, I have not found a good yellow yet as far as like the speed paints go or like the um, contrast paints or whatever, everything just looks super orange to me as far as um, the so-called yellows go. But it's actually a nice orange. Like I actually really like this as an orange um, for these guys' pauldrons. And um, one thing, you know, if you, if you use these and then it doesn't come out quite dark enough, you can just go over it again and then just glaze on a couple of layers uh, until it gets like exactly where you want it to the to the right color. So to get the uh, little face masks and stuff, and um, to kind of like bump up some of the saturation of the color and add a little bit of extra contrast. Um, I like to use my own oil wash and um, the oil paints, you know, they're they're different, right? Because like they take a really, really long time to dry um, and then you can kind of play with them a lot more. Like you can push them around and they don't have um, the same kind of surface tension. So they um, really, really want to run into the recesses and stuff when you make like a thin oil wash. And um, I don't have like an exact recipe for you. Um, it's one of those things where the, like I know it when I see it, I know what I'm looking for. Uh, basically like I'll mix it up and just kind of like keep stirring it up and um, Basically, I'm just looking for like the right runniness. I want it to be where like I, I push it up against the, the side of the little jar and then it runs off of it really smoothly. Um, so it's not like a consistency, or it is a consistency thing, but it's like, um, it isn't a color thing. It's more of just like having the right amount of uh, runniness. So for the last step to put this oil wash and I'm using a really really little fine brush and um, I'm using it as a pin wash 
And what that means is that I'm just like putting it into those little cracks and stuff and putting it like directly into the little deep recesses where I want it to, to stay. And I'm leaving it off of the highlights, like leaving it off the parts of the models where like the light is already where I want it because I don't want to dirty that up. Um, I just want to add a little bit of shadows. I just want to add a little bit of like richness and contrast to the shadows and kind of define the little like shapes, you know, on the armor since they're so like one note, like black and white. I just want things to like kind of pop out a little bit, just have those highlights and shadows just be a little bit more defined, if that makes sense. But you know, that's it. Like it's a pretty uh, quick and painless um, paint job. Uh, and I'm really, really happy with how they look. Like I, I like them a lot. So it all kind of came out how I wanted it to. I got my lights and darks in with the airbrush and, uh, but you know, got the, the nice bright whites on the, like the tops of the armor. And um, you know, I feel like they fit in in any setting, whether that's like in a snow, uh, snow setting, like it on Hoth, or if it's, you know, like a desert setting, like um, Tatooine or, or whatever it is, you know, like the, my stormtroopers are just gonna fit in and they're gonna look good there. All right, that's gonna be it, you guys. Uh, yeah, quick, painless, uh, easy paint job, pretty much. And, uh, I'm pretty happy with them. So yeah, uh, take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next one.